Hey there, I thought it'd be somewhat enjoyable for you all if I did a, uh, a full collection video, but I've resolved to each knife only have about a minute of talking. Otherwise it goes on a bit and it should keep it nice and fluid. I've broken them into loose categories, just as I've sort of been sorting through them. Got a whole bunch of folding knives here, I might do fixed blades in a separate video. I'm gonna start off with the first category, which is shit knives. So the worst knife in my collection is probably this Z Hunter. It does everything wrong. It's got uh, loose screws. Actually, this screw is just about to, oh, there it is. The screw just falls out because it's just in a hollow plastic scale and then a very poorly threaded backspacer. Uh, the liner lock goes to about 110%. Uh, it just uh, flops open. Uh, it's, yeah, it's just very cheap and very, it's sort of a silly knife. And it's, a, it's a great uh, a benchmark of how bad knives can get. It's a terrible junk steel, and it's um, yeah, basically the bottom of the barrel. The only thing I've got that's arguably worse is the Batman knife. Remember this from a Batman knife video? It's uh, two blades on each side. It's an eBay special. I brought it to make a silly video with. Uh, this is probably not even blade steel. It's probably just basic, you know, pot metal steel. Uh, but it's a spring-assisted knife that I ordered without any issue into Australia. And I guarantee you, if I tried to order a spring assistant decent knife, it would have stopped at the border. That's just how luck goes. Next up is a Gerber Paraframe. These are pretty bad knives. We've all had one of these. This is the little mini Tanto one. Um, the lockup goes all the way over. It's just an awkward and uncomfortable knife to use. The, I think it's the 3CR or the 5CR steel in it. Doesn't hold an edge. Um, and yeah, just, they're kind of everyone's first branded knife of about my generation of knife collectors. I think the Paraframe was where a lot of us started. Not me though, I somehow started even worse. This may be the first pocket knife I ever bought with my own money. This is the Gerber Bear Girls Mini Scout Folder. It's actually not terrible, like it's, yeah, it's it's probably got better steel than the Paraframe. It's a, it's a rear lock back. Um, it's just really, really cheap and chintzy and, um, I don't know, there's not really much else to say about it apart from this is pre yeah, probably the first folder I bought um, since like 2008 when I actually started being somewhat uh, interested in knives. And of course the interest took me in very uh, different places after this. The next category is one that I would call the weird knives. Knives that don't really have a, have a spot anywhere else, but they're all, none of them are particularly bad quality. They're all just a bit unusual. So let's look first at this open L I believe it is a cabbage knife or a vegetable knife or a, um, it's for like pruning roses and things like that as well. It's definitely more of a garden tool. Uh, it's actually got quite a nice comfortable sway back handle and I'm assuming it's in the uh, normal open hill stainless steel they use for their Inox knives. So um, yeah, it's definitely not a Marshall type karambit because that tip is super rounded off, but the blade in here is, you know, as an open hill should be, incredibly thin and sharp. So. Interesting nonetheless. Next is this little right coming bird. Look how small it is. Whoop, flips better. My thumb just got in the, my finger just got in the way. It's a RWL Damasteel, I think. Damasteel? Yeah, RWL 34 core Damasteel knife. It's perfectly formed. It's really, really well made and very nice. Very intricate detailing on it. It's just too, too small for me to ever use for anything, but I do admire it as a little piece of like, you know, executing a good knife design on a very small scale. Look how small it is. This is a Kershaw Sinkovich Pub. Uh, this one is the carbon fiber handled version. It's got a bottle opener and a little Warncliffe blade on it. And you can sort of carabiner key ca style carry it. There, it's like a little sort of gentleman's, you know, beer. It's this kind of guy, if you know that guy who still has that big old Bundaberg bottle open on his key ring, maybe get him this instead. It's pretty cool. It's like a cooler version of that. It'll open a beer just as well, but uh, also do something else as well, which is having a decent little blade. It's just 8CR13, but I think it's a cool idea. And it actually has enough of a detent that it won't just close on you super easy. You've got to give it a bit of a push. This is a Higo no Kami. Um, a great looking knife, but I never find them particularly useful in uh, practice. They're a friction folder, but um, the lever is very, very short, so it still doesn't take much to knock the, the blade closed again. They're such a simple design, just a folded piece of steel. The blade steel is generally pretty good in these. Usually it's at least a white steel or something similar. Sometimes it's just a 1095 type carbon steel, but uh, yeah, they usually cut and perform really well, but just as a whole knife package in general, not for me. I would never carry one by choice. This is the Sandrin TCK version two. 
Um, this is where, this is the um, tungsten carbide blade material. And this is where they started making strides towards making these properly good little edc -able knives. They've rounded the handles a little bit, made it a bit more substantial. And this is just a slip joint, so they haven't worried about doing a, a frame lock or a liner lock like they did on the first iteration, because it was just too thin. But um, it's got that crazy blade material that'll last a whole long time, doesn't rust. It's actually quite cool still. So the little uh, TCK2 is there. And my last super weird knife is this. This is the Large Bush Folder by Hardcore Hardware. No, by Half Breed Blades. Um, and it is just massive. It's like a, almost, it's like a Medford caliber sort of knife. S35VN, uh, great flipping action. It's um, just so darn big, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> what I'd ever use it for apart from just saying, hey, look at that cool giant knife. And it is just easily the heaviest knife I've got in a folder by, you know, by at least twice as much. Some semi-traditional knives here. I've got a Victorinox Swiss Army knife. This is my favorite model. This is the Explorer with the magnifying glass. It's basically a super tinker with a magnifying glass and the 3D Phillips head, which are two great additions to a uh, Swiss Army knife, in my opinion. I then also have a little white classic. I used to get these for people whenever I didn't quite know what to get them for like a little event, like a birthday or a, or a um, you know, a welcome home or something like that, or a farewell. Um, great little present knives and they work really well. Really good keychain knives, probably the best keychain knife I think, because they're so innocuous and they're so light. This is my GEC farm and field tool, 1095 steel, just a, a orange Delrin style handle. I really like it. It's a rear lock back knife, so it's got the lock at the end there. Um, goes well. I actually do carry this from time to time. It cuts really great. It's got a really thin 1095 blade on it that is still very, very scary sharp. I thinned it out even more than the factory grind was, which has probably made it a bit fragile, but boy, 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 does it slice a piece of cheese pretty good. Here is a Civivi Rustic Gent in Damasteel. It's a very cool um, looking blade. Uh, it's Chinese as, uh, so it's kind of loses a few of those kind of heritagey points if that's what's important to you with a uh, traditional style knife. Comes with a nice slip clip. It's really well put together. Um, the blade still holds a pretty decent edge and it's uh, flawlessly sort of executed really in terms of its fit and finish and whatnot. Uh, yeah, great little unique offering from Civivi in its own range anyway. Just shuffling forward, I've also got an original opener. This is the carbon steel. I've had a few of these in the past and I've used and abused them to various degrees. Uh, this one still has a very, very nice sort of, as they come from the factory, super sharp edge. Um, great little knives, great gifts, little, um, th these are just as hard, these go just as well in like a kitchen drawer uh, for like, yeah, cutting up like strawberries or something as well. So um, I think anyone could enjoy an opener also wholeheartedly recommend those. And just while we're staying in traditional, I'll just get my three buck traditionals out because they're not, there. is a buck 110 traditional? I've got three of them. I've got this standard 110 in, um, it's the, just the normal walnut or whatever the wood is, and 420 HC steel brass bolsters. Then I've got the lightweight buck 110, which is just a plastic handle, still the 420 HC steel. It's about a third of the weight, it feels like super lightweight. Still that same good blade, um, very nicely done, very, very sharp still. And um, these comes with such good edges, the 110s generally, especially the hollow grind clip point. And then this is my um, sort of fancier 110. Uh, this one's in 20 CV steel. This is just an addition. It doesn't come with this little uh, thumb stud thing here and I don't actually use it anyway. Uh, so it's got the nickel silver bolsters and whatever that wood is, but uh, 20 CV. So this one will cost you about $200 and it comes with a even nicer, sort of a softer brown suede leather sheath. Looking at excellent budget knives now, the next category is excellent budget knives. I'm gonna start with this is QSP <laughs> Penguin. <laughs> I think it's the Penguin. Um, this has been excellent. I've spoken a bit about this already. It's in D2 steel. Something about this design, the blade shape, maybe just the really ease, the ease of handling and using it. Um, it's been a really excellent hard use knife for me in moving. Like I've used it for basically everything that I need to stick a knife that I didn't really worry too much about busting the knife. So you can use these without fear and that's what's best about a good budget knife. So this is the first really great budget knife I'm going to show you. Another one's even cheaper than that and this is the Dozier in AUS 8. It feels a little less nice than the other ones but it's just so darn cheap for a good brand name knife still. Um, 
it's a great sort of first knife for like a, you know, someone in their early teens or something like that. They can learn to sharpen on it without worrying about ruining it. You just get them another one if they completely make a mess of it. Um, great little knives, the Doziers. Uh, we couldn't talk budget knives without talking about the Rat series. This is the Rat 2 in D2 steel. These are excellent. I uh, like my little, um, uh, what, are you, what would you call that, tan uh, FRN on the handle there. These have great action, they always have. The D2 steel is a really good upgrade. And I mean, my D2, yeah, it's worn a little bit rougher than like the stainless wood, but overall, it's been a great knife. This is a Civivi, oh, I don't even know what it's called, but it's great. Um, Maybe I'll put the title up on the screen if I can figure it out. Um, this isn't the like the paper micata, the brown paper micata, or linen, brown linen micata, or whatever it is. I think it's a paper micata. Um, really good, tall, hollow ground G10 blade. This is one of the better cutting knives I've had. Um, really acutely ground. Civivi don't muck around with their grinds. Um, they certainly do put emphasis on how the knife actually passes through material, in my experience with them anyway. And everything else about the knife is certainly very well executed. Um, yeah, really, an overall really safe bet. If you're after something budget and it's got Civivi's logo on it, I don't think, unless it's a really jazzy one, it's going to be too, too controversial to say, go for it. These are my first, this is my first like good-ish pocket knife I bought. I was showing you that Bear Grylls thing. I think I upgraded from the Bear Grylls thing to this. This is a Leatherman C33 Crater. It's in 420HC steel again, tip up only, yep. Um, it's got a bit of jiggle to it now. I've worn that blade down like crazy. Um, but yeah, these are absolutely fine knives. Like there is nothing wrong with them at all. You can look in the earliest videos of my channel. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> Just breaks as I try to use it. Yeah, the blade's off center now. But um, it's been used and stored and mistreated a lot. Actually, it needs to pivot tighten. That's what's going on. But anyway, really good knife. First knife that I would say is my first good purchase. Goodish, anyway, good brand. Uh, here's a Gerber. I think Stuart might have sent me this one. This is just a Gerber Gator. These are like fairly traditional style knives with sort of like a rubberized, sort of they're mainly for like small hunting jobs, I think. A little interesting blade there. I've used it for sharpening, uh, steel testing here and there, I think as well. Just nice to have on deck, a little Gerber Gator. Not everything Gerber makes is trash, especially not anymore. So if you can filter through the US stuff, you actually find some pretty decent things. And that's like one of their, it's like the LST, one of their classic models. Uh, another buck knife. This is the buck marksman. Just a couple of little knives that don't really fit into categories. So I'll be bringing up here. So buck marksman, very sort of mechanically um, almost perfect knife. I think it's got a great action. It's got a really strong lock. It's a bit odd looking, but I kind of like that. It's a very unique looking blade. Um, it looks almost like a Strider knife here and there. Um, it's made by the Hawks. This uh, strap lock was designed by the Hawks, and the strap lock is. Once you get the knack down, very, very fun to play with. 154 CM steel. This is really a top tier EDC choice in my opinion, even steel. You can get nicer ones as well with micarta and with better steels and whatnot. But uh, my Tanto one, Scotty got it from Scotty ages ago. Thanks Scotty. Um, done really well still, really like it. Enjoy it a lot. I'll talk too long on that one. Two cold steel folders. Um, we've got the well, I've locked it shut. It's got a lock lock. Ugh. I hate the lock lock, but the uh, this is a great, another sort of really good first knife for maybe a younger kid. Uh, this uh, Bush Ranger Lite. It's inexpensive, so if they ruin it, it's not a big deal. They haven't gone and ruined their normal Bush Ranger, which is like a 200 and something dollar knife. Uh, 8CR13 steel. Very comfortable, very big sort of safe handle. Got the double safe lock so they can lock it closed and have to really think about when they use it. Um, but apart from that, it's just a mid-back lock, non-triad locking. And um, yeah, overall, it's fine. And then this is a big silly knife. This is the SR1 Lite. So a proper big wedge of a knife. Um, not gonna cut, uh, you know, potatoes for you very well, but great folding pry bar aesthetics going on here. You could really use this until it was completely ruined and you wouldn't feel too badly about it because it's probably only about is it 50 US dollars or something like that, 100 Australian, but for a cold steel knife, 100 Australian bucks for something that's this durable and yeah, pretty well done. It's 8CR13 MOV. Um, I just hope we still keep seeing things like this out of cold steel since the ownership's changed. And my CRKT knives, I've got three of them. I've got the CRKT Sketch, which is, it's an okay knife. Um, it has an awkward, the opening mechanism isn't done very well. So I'll just put some of my skin behind that so you can see where the hole is. It's just, you have to really get your thumb under there without, um, you know, 
sort of falling off of it to get it open. So not particularly a joy to open and shut. It's comfortable in the hand. It's just fine. You're gonna pay 30 bucks or so for it. It's fine. It's a 8CR13 as with most CRKTs. I think, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> this is the, um, this is a weird knife. This is a CRKT folding razor. Um, it's got another lock lock on it, which I think is dumb. So you can lock the blade open. I always say that it causes me more issues than anything else. This pocket clip is a really cool idea, but executed horribly because when you grip on the knife, it sits right up against your finger at the back and pokes you incessantly. You could put your finger over it, but then you're holding the knife back too far. It's just awkward. It doesn't work. I wish they'd rethought that, but the rest of the knife, I've actually used this a whole bunch because it's got that chisel tip, which is really quite a unique thing to have sometimes in a pocket knife. You don't have to go all over your shed to get your chisel if you need to just strip some paint off of something or free something up. So actually, when this is in my top drawer, I actually go for it more than I would have thought. And then lastly, CRKT on hand is this um, large Pilar. So the Pi Large, this is an 8CR14 MOV steel. It's rusted like crazy. And this is, all these knives are kept in the same condition. Do you notice that's rusted more than the, the D2 stuff? So that's why I initially thought this was D2, but it ain't, <laughs> it's 8CR14. Um, the rest of the knife is fine. This is a really good design. I like the flipper. Um, I think I like the original Pilar a bit better. I don't know, I don't know why. Um, I don't think it needed this big forward, you know, flipper area and stuff and the extra size, but it's a fine usable knife. Another kind of great gift knife for someone that you care enough about to buy a knife, but you don't care so much about that you wanna drop a huge amount of money. So that's my CRKTs. Uh, three other Chinese knives I'll show you now. So this is a Two Sun. I love this design. I think this is one of the best designed little knives. It's so cool looking. I love this wheel thing. I had an issue with the steel on this one and it sort of upset a few. Two Sun has really intense fans. I learned that when I made my, my video. So if someone may be questioning the steel or questioning if it was done correctly, you get, uh, yeah, you get some uh, pretty heated people that really set their watch to Two Sun knives. Design-wise, it's great. This is a tepe or a tape design, and he has a good eye, because that's a very, very slick looking design. It's just, nothing else looks like this, really unique. It's hard to be unique in this you know, current knife situation. And just the general footprint of the thing, really, really cool. It's got that little chunk factor, it feels quality. All it was with me, I did steel testing on this S90V blade, and just didn't perform like S90V should, in my opinion. I tested it a few times, so. I don't know, you can watch that video and decide if I'm wrong or whatever's going on. This is a Proelia knife. I'm gonna review this soon. A couple of people actually asked to see, hey, can you review the Proelia TX050? Which is what this is. I'd never heard of the brand before. I think this was a mass drop knife. Uh, it's S35VN and carbon fiber on both sides. It looks like a big ZT knife. It looks, a, it could almost be, yeah, I don't know. It feels very just generic kind of, this is a tactical-esque knife in the mid two th in the mid 2010s. But it's not a bad thing. It just feels almost a little bit Sinkovich-ish, but a little bit bigger and beefier. It's not bad. It's certainly not bad. It's actually good. Like the action's good. Everything about it is good. It's just real darn forgettable. Uh, I don't know what it is, but um, I will do a review on it because be the last. Right here. And then look at this. This is a Wii Knife 604. My mate uh, Jeff thought I'd like this, and I do. It's I, I love the thin knives. Like I love knives that have a very thin profile in your pocket. When they feel more, the, the closer a knife feels like to a pen, the better for me. It's just what I like. I like to have my phone and my knife in my same pocket. So this one does pretty good for that. It's an S35VN, I reckon, or maybe it's, no, I think this is an M390 actually. And um, yeah, it's well put together. It's actually got a slight bit of lock rock on it, but I don't know if that's, particularly a problem or not really. It doesn't, never even been close to slamming shutter on me or anything, just a little bit of a fit and finishy type thing, I suppose. Yeah, it's M390, says on the bottom of the blade. So there we go. Uh, and also there's the Wii Knives Banter. This is one of my favorites. I've I've only warmed to this knife. Some people, there's a bit of a, these were everywhere when they came out because everyone wanted to support our mate Ben. He's like the collective, um, hero of the knife world for working at Blade HQ and getting to be on those cool videos and then making his own knife. I think everyone would like to be a little bit of Ben. Um, but I think a few people were like, I don't know, razzed up by it because it's so darn neutral. 
but uh, I really like it. I like how it performs, carries, and just generally acts as a little utility blade. Done really well there, Ben, my friend. So, Spyderco Tenacious. Not much to say about the Tenacious, is there? This is black washed. This is the lightweight version, and my video was just ripped on it for carry. Like this shouldn't be called lightweight when it's like 11 grams lighter than the G10 version. It just it's silly. It should be just called FRM. But apart from that, it's a completely fine entry level knife. Could have sat pretty well with those budgets that I showed you before. So it's a good knife, good action, cuts well. It's a Spyderco, fits well in the hand. It's good. My Spyderco Police, this is one of my favorites. I have gave it a vinegar bath to get some rust off the other day and I actually ended up unintentionally blackwashing it, which I think is actually kind of cool looking. What do you think? Um, I love the Police. This is probably my third favorite knife, um, but I'll wait, I'll do my top two in a second because I have to sort of changed a little bit. So Police is great, Police 4 in K390. This one, I really enjoy the, what's this called, the Tropen. It's a silly knife. I think, I think the wizard Nick said to me, Pete, if you give the trope in a good review, and you know what I did, I, because it, it's, a, it's a silly knife and it's probably not a knife I'd recommend to many people, but if you go into this with this kind of attitude of, I just want something a bit crazy, then you get crazy in spades. It's, it's fun, it's a lot of fun. Emerson wave, uh, compression locking, uh, flipper opening, it's good. And it's, um, I like the Polish G10, it's s 30 blade. It's um, it's a dangerous knife. Like you accidentally cut yourself on this. For me, it's when it's not this part here. They all went on about this. For me, it's accidentally Emerson waving myself when I don't mean to and catching my pinky on it or something. That's happened a couple of times. Okay, uh, I've got two delicas. One is in K390 with my new black wash. I liked it so much I did it again. And the other one is in Super Gold uh, with the stainless steel. This one was a uh, mass drop version, I think with the little gold backspacer there. Uh, it came a bit off-centered. I remember I tried to sell this and um, I maybe I hadn't even checked, but I just figured Delica's come off-center um, a little bit, but yeah, the person didn't want it in the end or something happened. And then um, this one is quite a decent example of a Delica. It's uh, fairly well-centered and yeah, very well done the K3. And I love the blue they chose for that run. Very good too. The Spidey Chef. Yeah, I like the Spidey Chef a lot. It's definitely my top five still. Uh, it's possibly the most recommendable Spyderco, if you ask me. I'm not a biggest, not the biggest fan of the PM2. I don't hate it, but I'm not the biggest fan. I'd always suggest getting a Chef if you want a good Spyderco. LC200 and steel titanium handle. Cool, unique design and looks kind of futuristic. Um, yeah, overall it's a win. And then three little kind of interesting knives that I kind of failed to categorize as well as some others. So we've got, this is a quiet carry drift, and this is in probably the best uh, blade steel on the table, I would say. This is Vanax, a steel that holds a better edge than M390 in my opinion, generally speaking. Uh, is utterly rust proof and um, is just really expensive, so you don't see it very often. But uh, this is in a entirely stain proof knife. Uh, this um, quiet carry. It's um, I think a couple of faults I had with it. I didn't love the um, deployment of it. This um, hole isn't so great. And also you can shake it open when you haven't got the thing tightened down. The tent was a little bit weak as well. But nice little knife in the hand and certainly really thin with a great slicing blade. Just wish they were a little bit more open about where it was made. Whenever you don't talk about or you kind of dodge openly where the country of origin is, uh, it always feels a bit more odd to me rather than just, I don't care, this is one of my favorite knives, it's made in China, I don't care. Just, just be open about it. I don't know why you would in this day and age keep it a secret. Anyway, uh, the next is the Mass Drop Perpetua. This is the first version of it. This has kind of got an old, you know, the uh, Axis style lock. Um, this is in Nitro V steel. It's got a really great hollow ground blade and I've put a nice high shiny edge on. Cuts really, really well. I think they even improved it by adding some cutouts for your fingers here. It's a little bit blocky, but a really nice knife nonetheless. Nitro V is a really good basic sort of um, stainless steel. And then there's also this knife. This is a Sandrin knife. And this is Sandrin coming full circle and making like a good EDCable pocket knife. Really interesting lock. It's like this spring at the top that you pull back. So I'll do it in a way that won't damage my fingers. So you pull this bar back at the top and the knife just drops down really, really well. So it's got great action, really nicely done. And it's in the tungsten carbide material. Uh, it's still like, 
they have str they tr struggle tapering their blades. So they're usually just flat pieces of TC with edges cut into them, but the pieces of TC are so darn thin that you still get really good cutting performance and an edge that really doesn't quit. Like I, I think I said, I moved house with this knife, cut a lot of boxes, edges still crazy sharp. So really, really cool. And I quite like, there's not too many red handled knives going around. So I like that they chose red. And the pocket clip is just fine as well. It's deep carry. It's a bit on the big side for me, but you know, got to do something a bit unique as well. So there we go. So I've got two of these knives. These are real steel metamorphs. So I've got this one here. This is the mini in M390. Hard to do it with one hand or with my left hand at least. Mini metamorph in M390 and the standard metamorph in LC, no, in uh, 14C28N. Um, these are both really good choices. Um, this is quite nice if you're after something a bit larger to maybe span like a whole apple or something. And this one's just a great little pocket knife. Just overall, I love that thinness of it. The brown micarta, so damn cool. Came with a really good edge. Uh, the steel's holding up well. I'll do a review and I'll test the steel properly when I get to it. Because you know, that whole stigma of China M390, and you know, I know that I didn't do it properly, lots of people say, but love the little knife. Really great design. And it's a, just an excellent design. I love how they've redone the the flipper there, it's cool. I, do you not like that? I think it's an amazing looking knife. Cool, my favorite two knives, here they are. This guy here, this is the Benchmade uh, Super Freak in M4. And this has really become like the knife I, when I have my favorite knife, but I need to maybe do something a bit heavier and I don't scale my work in my head. I'm not that autistic that I think why well, I'm doing X job, I need to go on X, I often move my knives into the scenarios I need to, whether I should or shouldn't. Um, but this guy, when I'm after something, maybe I'm working outside all day, I'll get this guy. And this to me is like the new American Lawman, which I forgot to show you, it's down the shelf. You know what American Lawman's like? That's good knife too. But this is like the slightly more mechanically fun version of the American Lawman. It's not gonna be as durable. No, nah, it's an access lock. It's it'll got a spring in it, all that stuff. Um, but the M4 steel, the combination of this nice sort of rib G10 handle, uh, not the sort of the rubberized one on the normal freaks, deep carry clip, it's a real win. It's probably my second favorite knife. And my favorite knife, of course, as you probably all already guessed, thank you to Brian once again for hooking me up with this TRM Atom. Love the new scales. I had the gray scales on it before. Now we've got the blues, so that was very cool as well to change that up. But the TRM Atom is like the perfect EDC pocket knife, in my opinion. It, uh, it has great steel, ground really well, really slim um, in both ways in your pocket. It's just really carryable and causes you literally no problems at all. Like, I don't think anyone would hold this and be like, this is terrible. I hate this. I'm having a bad day. It's, um, yeah. It's a bit of a pleaser. And I know it's probably a pretty conventional choice is my favorite, but there it is. Anyway, guys, that's my whole collection. I think I kept it to about a minute per knife. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.